Chad AC Show News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. Let's head to the phone. Special session kicking off today and joining us on the program, State Representative John Frulo. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Chad. Are you, do we find you well-rested after your vacation? Uh, well-earned vacation. How well, about that? Well, thank you. Technically a business trip. Technically a business trip. But yes, oh, okay. but yes, absolutely. You guys <laughs> you know, opened a branch in the Bahamas? That's that right. <laughs> you know, taking in a uh, in, in Astros game and uh, heading out to the San Jacinto Monument. Not a bad way to spend a weekend. Uh, not not no. at all. Uh, now, uh, you get to spend the next 30 days in Austin, Texas. That, that's what I hear. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> The, that's what, what's on the what is it that was what was on the uh, glossy brochure that's right uh, congratulations uh, you only thought you were done uh no no we have a special session coming up and uh I, I, before we get into some of the, the the different issues uh you know obviously you've heard the, the the back and forth being played out in the media between uh the governor the lieutenant governor and the and the house speaker uh, what are your feelings going into this special session? Is this a special session where a lot will be accomplished, or is this going to be a special session where a lot is talked about but not a lot is actually accomplished? You know, I think that along those lines today will uh, kind of be the, the bellwether for that. It will give us a lot of insight into what is going to happen based on what the House does and what the Senate does. And that'll kind of, uh, I think, chart the course for where we're going. Additionally, we'll get other information, other pieces of information as we go along. You know, the, the governor announced this, what, roughly six weeks ago, but really kind of gave some vague information on what he was wanting done, but didn't issue the proclamation until last week. And, of course, that, that's the, the true marching orders or the itinerary of where we're going and what we have going as we go along we'll get more information on the other 19 items he did the sunset item first and of course we'll do the other items and and so just that interaction over today and probably the next couple of days will give us a lot of insight into what what we can expect what will happen you know what type of bills will get filed it's actually going to be like a mini session you know we're going to have some bills out there that are good bills that must be done have to be done you know the sunset bills I I think everybody agrees that those are very important to get to and just like a regular session we'll have things that will be real good people are excited about we'll have things that are probably you know the, the state will be better off if we do them uh, not necessarily close the state down if they don't get done till next session. And we'll have some stuff that's filed that uh, isn't even going to be on a call, is kind of a little crazy, and won't go anywhere. So, you know, in a lot of respects, I think it's going to be a little bit like a normal session. Uh, at this point, I'd be surprised if everything did pass, just because we've got uh, 20 items in 30 days. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see what that uh, course is. Uh, how how long do you anticipate sunset? Because sunset has to get done first, and, and that's what the governor laid out. Uh, get sunset passed, and then we can focus on the other issues. Do, do you have an idea of how long it, it'll take to get the sunset uh, uh, bills taken care of? You know, that's a good question. It's going to be one that's hard to understand because it sure seemed to get, be hard to get done last session for whatever reason. And part of it was, I think, is because it was used as a uh, uh, you know a tactic to. Uh, uh, for other items. I, I think this time where it's being focused on, it can be focused on and get, uh, you know, through the different bodies fairly quickly. You know, you have to remember that the Senate has a different set of rules than the House, and the Senate is also able to bend those rules a lot easier than the House is, just by the way they're set up and the way they work. Um, I think the gover- governor, you know, he has said on different occasions that he expects it to uh, be done with the Senate and go to the House. And so, you know, I would expect uh, you know, something like that would happen. But, you know, there again, let's see what happens these first couple of days. We're visiting with State Representative John Frulo here on the Chad HD Show. Uh, yesterday, the governor, I believe he was speaking at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, and uh, he said that he was going to keep a list and that he was going to publish a list. Uh, and he said no one gets to hide. Uh, he said that he will be publishing a list on a daily basis of lawmakers who are backing and opposing his priorities. Do you have any problem with that? There were some lawmakers that were uh, quoted in some different news outlets that had a problem with that. Others who uh, tweeted out that they didn't have a problem with it. Um, Where do you stand on on the governor naming names? 
Well, I think for one thing, you know, the transparency is a, a big issue, and I think it's an important issue, and people need to see uh, the transparency of the issues. We can see that. We see it uh, with the way the media works now, the way social media works. Um, you know, if you look back, I, I don't remember Governor Perry ever doing anything like that uh, in that manner, and I didn't hear exactly what the governor said. So I think it'll be interesting, but I, I think people know where we stand, and, you know, depending Depending on what the issue is and where you're at, the, uh, the specific district's interests may or may not exactly align with the governor, the governor's interests. So uh, because that information out is out, I don't know that it's going to be punitive in all situations, but we'll see. You know, there again, there are some good things. You know, we're all paying way too much in property taxes. I think that it's crazy. And, you know, we need to work on that. Uh, and we have been working on it. The medical board, they, they need to be uh, fixed. You know, there's certain things like the increase in teachers' pay. Well, you know, that's a neat idea. Where does that money come from? Uh, right. You know, h- how do you pay for that? It- it's a neat idea. We'd all like to do it. I think we all feel that uh, teachers uh, need to be paid more, and especially the teacher side, not necessarily going through the administrative side, but on the teaching side, we need to make sure that the, the best and the brightest are teaching. And, you know, I think one of the other things, and it's not in the system, is more of a merit system where the good teachers get paid more, just like in business, you know, the good uh, broadcast. A good talk show host make more money than ones that aren't so good. And uh, I think all of us, uh, you know, can relate to that. But we'll, we'll, again, have to see where it is. But as far as the governor uh, keeping a list or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I, I think that the, the things that we do need to be open and transparent. Uh, can you hold on for one more segment? We'll make it a short yeah. segment because I know uh, y'all get gaveled in at, at around 10 o'clock this morning, correct? 10 o'clock, we're off to the races. Okay, so we'll we'll do a short segment with you when we come back. State Representative John Frulo here on the Chad AST Show. We'll put him uh, back on hold. And when we come back, more to discuss with the upcoming special session that will be gaveled in here in about 15 minutes. We'll be right back. This is the Chad AST Show. And joining us on the phone lines right now, right before the special session gets kicked off, it's Representative John Frulo. Welcome back to the show, sir. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, th- there is a letter that was uh, that that was sent to Governor Abbott, and I, I want to get your opinion on this because uh, you represent, uh, uh, of course, Lubbock, and and uh, Lubbock Mayor Dan Pope signed off on this letter. And uh, th- this letter from, uh, and I'm, I'm looking here from the uh, the, the Dallas Morning News, uh, one of their writers uh, has this, but basically uh, this letter says that uh, there are policies which the, uh, the, the governor is trying to put out uh, that uh, they read, uh, or they say harmful proposals such as revenue and spending caps. I'm assuming they mean the property tax reform there, even though it's not technically a spending cap. Limiting annexation authority and other measures preempting local development ordinances directly harm our ability to plan for future growth and continue to serve as the economic uh, engines of Texas. What What are your thoughts on this? Uh, on this, just hearing about this, uh, do you think there are proposals from the governor in this special session that would harm Lubbock, Texas? You know, it's it's again it's. Hard to say what's going to happen and what happened, you know, just as the bills go through the process. And of course, a bill is filed, as, as you're well aware of. It goes through committees. Oftentimes, it's amended in the committee. People talk about it. They point out things that truly are wrong with bills, things that can make them better, items like that. And the bill will change there. It'll get out on the House floor. Of course, the same thing happens on the Senate side. If there's differences, it gets, uh, they get pounded out possibly in a conference committee or, you know, and they can die at any stage and then they go on to the governor. As far as what actually comes out, I don't know, but I think getting back to what we said earlier, we all think that our property taxes are out of control. And, you know, we've said that for a long time. We've tried to do things to reduce those property taxes down here. And, uh, you know, just, just the way they increase. So I think that in, in some cases, uh, we wonder why the local governments, you know, being a part of the state government, but also paying local government taxes, why do these taxes keep going up? What's happening? Where is that money going? Why is it that, you know, in a number of cases, each of us in our own businesses, uh, whatever we do, 
we're not getting an increase every year, but for some reason, other folks are. So we have to look at that and say, what's going on and how can this thing be stopped? It'll be interesting to see how all that works out. But I think that uh, something does have to happen. Our property taxes are way too high. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about, and I think we pretty much have at the state level, kept uh, growth down to uh, what inflation and um, population growth are, but uh, you know we'll have to see what what, are, what ends up, what ends up coming out of these items. Well, the last question I have for you before we let you go, um, as you have probably heard, you, you have the, the 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 mayors of Lubbock and Amarillo. Uh, they're trying to form a a I guess coalition, if you will. Uh, to to address the legislature on some different issues. This seems to be this whole local control versus what the state is doing uh, in, in, in some of the, the, the laws that, uh, that y'all will be debating. Do you anticipate after the special session, after everything is done, that this is going to be a much broader discussion that needs to happen uh, in, in different public forums and wherever it may be about local control and who is, you know, where that line is? Well, I think it's always a con- uh, you know a concern and a point of discussion. It uh, and it's always being brought up. People again, they want to make sure they're getting something for what they're paying, or they want to be able to control themselves. And in statewide, Texas is a big state. The the needs and the concerns and the problems that we have up in Lubbock are a lot different than what you see in the valley. And so we. We always talk about one size does not fit all, and that's very true in Texas. And we need to make sure that the different areas of Texas can operate and control what they have going on. Representative Frulo, enjoy the uh, the heat and humidity in Austin, and enjoy the special session. And I'm sure we'll dis- uh, we'll talk with you again during the next thirty days. Well, down here working for you, Chad. Representative Frulo, as always, appreciate your time. Likewise, thank you.